This is the solution to problem one on March the 11th's recitation. So here we're um, talking about how the conservation of momentum is not some new thing, not something that you couldn't have guessed, sorry my microphone keeps slipping down, uh, but is just a consequence of what you've already learned. So this is a consequence of Newton's second and third laws, let's write those down. So Newton's second law says that the force on an object is equal to its mass times the acceleration that force causes. And Newton's third law says that if objects A and B are pushing on each other, the force that A exerts on B is equal and opposite to the force that B exerts on A. So what I want to do is I want to combine these two ideas. Um, I'm going to talk through this uh, kind of intuitively and then talk through it formally. So Newton's third law says that if I push you, you push back on me. Um, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, right? Let's write that down. That's m times the derivative of velocity. So if um, a force changes one object's velocity, it will change the other object's velocity in the opposite direction because of Newton's third law. And you can show that the change in velocity induced by the force on one object is such that the change in its momentum is equal and opposite to the change in the other thing's momentum. So forces just move momentum from one thing to the other. They never uh, change the total amount. So let's prove this kind of rigorously. So I'm going to start with Newton's third law. And I'm going to move everything to one side. So this gives me that FAB minus FBA equals zero. Now, since I know that the force is mass times acceleration, let's put that in. So we're going to now substitute in from Newton's second law. Make a little better arrow here again. Ah, I think my tablet is a little bit miscalibrated. It's not quite drawing where I want it to. Um, so substituting that in, that means that m b m b a b, so mass times acceleration, minus m a acceleration of a is zero. But acceleration is just change in velocity over change in time, right? So that means, oops, I need to switch off of my little arrow tool. That means that mb. change in velocity over change in time minus the same thing for a delta v a delta t equals zero. So here I'm imagining two objects exchanging a force over some amount of time um, delta t and I have this relation about the change in their velocities. Now, I can cancel, whoops, that was the wrong thing to do. I can cancel the changes in time by multiplying through by that. And that just gives me that mb delta vb 
minus ma delta va is zero, but mass times velocity is just momentum. So the change in momentum of b plus the change in momentum of a always adds to zero, and if the change in something, the change in the total of something is zero, that means its total is constant. Let me tell you all a story. Uh, last year, I gave this same problem on recitation, and I had to substitute for a sick TA uh, during their recitation. And I noticed that students were kind of skipping over this problem because it doesn't have any math in it. It's, you know, here I've written out the solution algebraically, but it's better really to understand this intuitively, right? That if I, um, force is mass times acceleration, acceleration causes changes in velocity. So mass times acceleration is like a rate of change of momentum. So if two things are exchanging forces, then the rate of change of their momenta are equal and opposite. That's kind of the math that I did. And I saw students were skipping over it. Uh, and along with another problem where there wasn't any math, they just had to think through something. And uh, I put that same problem on the exam because people were skipping it and it didn't go well. So just because a problem doesn't have any mathematics in it doesn't mean it's not important. So if you're looking for the solutions to the other two problems for this recitation, they will be on the next video.